This year's Fly In Cruise In, we had the largest antique tractor display we've ever had. And I'm with Jerry Lozier. Jerry, you're with the Warren Area Antique Tractor Club. And what a display you guys had out there. Well, it was, it was interesting. Uh, enjoyed it. Uh, hope to go back next year. Uh, was there the year before, but yes, it's quite a quite an ordeal out there to see the old tractors uh, out there. I grew up on a lot of that stuff, and I guess I couldn't get rid of all of it. Well, you know, Jerry, you're a full-time farmer, and and you're carrying on really your great grandfather's tradition, farming, and this equipment behind us. Uh, quite unusual. You've taken it to a new level by having a mounted antique corn picker mounted on this uh, International 400. Yeah, there's a several of those still around, but I don't know of very many right in this close area. There's one down around Green, Greenfield or Greentown down in there. And uh, yeah, I grew up on this, not this particular serial number. I had to go find find a neighbor still had one in a barn and it was in decent shape uh reworked it chains of course painted it uh bearings on it and so forth but uh yeah i grew up picked several acres back in the 50s uh with this with this picker helped my grandpa also helped my father and uh was between the two of them uh, yeah we got tried to pick corn and keep things going feed the hogs and one thing and another Jerry, what year is this corn picker? This corn picker is a 1954, uh, and the tractor is a, is a gas 400, 1955. You've completely restored these. Both pieces of equipment looks like it came right off the showroom floor. Well, yeah, it's two years of working on this corn picker. I, I had this corn picker all apart. I mean, from the elevator to the snouts. Uh, it wasn't all beat up, but it sat around several years, uh, cleaned it up, painted it, didn't like what I come out with, so uh, sanded it off, wet sanded it off, and, and, and the second time we done okay. Well, Jerry, you do this full time. It's a passion with you. I, yeah, I guess it is. Uh, I wouldn't want to go back farming with them. I think the, the world would starve if we'd go back to these type of tractors because there's not, you know, we're only 1% now. I suppose back in the 50s we was 35 and 40% farmers when my grandpa and dad and great-grandpa was farming. It's nice to have them around to look at, look at them, uh, crawl on them and start them and, and, and hang out with some older guys my age or even older or younger. Uh, go to plow days, uh, basically meet like we did over at the fly-in. You know, you, you hear a lot of stories. <laughs> you do. It's, it's, it's wonderful to reflect back on how you used to do it. Yeah, I think that's the whole part of it. Uh, you take this picker here when it's in, in, in its prime back in the mid-50s. If you would pick 800 bushel a day, you was doing pretty good. Well, today with the combine that, that a lot of us own, we, we can pick a thousand bushel in less than an hour. We can fill a semi less than an hour and really not push it. This tractor have a torque converter? It has a TA, yeah. It has the torque amplifier, uh -huh. which was very handy, as we mentioned before. You get into some heavier corn uh, on the AM or something, you'd have to maybe push a clutch down, throw it out of gear and let out on it real quick where the this model uh, had a torque amplifier that you come in on the heavy spots, you pulled it back, and it slowed the travel speed about one-third, and then it would catch up, and then it would go right on. You went to college and came out as a school teacher. Yeah, I uh, graduated from Ball State University in 1966. Uh, taught school at uh, Jones Jr., in Gas City uh, for three years. Uh, I enjoyed it, but I, it just wasn't my bag of bolts. I just wasn't uh, satisfied with it. And in the meantime, older farmers in the area were retiring, and I was, well, working my way into uh, renting ground, buying some ground. And uh, after the three years, well, I decided that 
I was going to be a full-time farmer and got into the hogs. Had a lot of hogs and uh, that kept me going, I guess, through the lean years. And you always had corn to sell, beans to sell, or, or a pig to sell, you know. <laughs> One of the three was trying to make me some money. and that's. You grew up on a farm and your great-grandfather, father, and now you? Yeah, I just moved a mile north. Uh, I grew up just a mile south of here. And then, of course, my grandpa uh, lived uh, a mile east of here, and then my great-grandpa was about three miles north of here. You're the fourth-generation farmer, and, and you're still farming some of your great-grandfather's land today. Yeah, there's a little, uh, about 42 acres of it that I, that I owned or purchased from a, a neighbor. It was sold to the neighbor, and then uh, I purchased it to get it back in the family, I guess, is what one reason. And... Uh, yeah, I'm uh, on my dad's side. Uh, he was one of 13 kids, and there was just no land available when everybody split that up. And uh, so, anyway, this is on my mother's side. Jerry, I know you pretty well. Farming for you, it's not a job, it's really a lifestyle, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't consider it it's a job, don't get me wrong. I mean, and today you've got to be so up on things and, and and if you mess up on marketing or you mess up on buying the wrong seed uh, yes it, it, it'll hurt you pretty hard uh, but it's a job but it's I don't consider it uh, it's not an eight to five job uh, you start out some mornings at five o'clock and you may not quit till midnight even at my age but uh, you got to enjoy it to do it yes you just got to enjoy it and I've always enjoyed it, and uh, I suppose I will till I pass away. It's it's not just you; it's your entire family that's involved in your farm. Yeah, uh, it it has been. I got one daughter that passed away several years ago that was doing a lot. Thirty four years old, and on a trip on on a seed corn trip that uh, that I had qualified for, and I didn't want to go, so she and her best friend went. And something happened, and she never come back. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Had a leukemia. I mean, it happened in three days, blip, and she was going. Uh, and then the next daughter come along and filled her shoes. <laughs> and uh, it, it, it's a family affair. You got to remember the good times. Yeah. That's that's the way I get through this.